Loading. Trying to kill it. connection we are going live brilliant i think we're on so good afternoon and welcome to another edition of community clay time um i'm just signing in with my phone so i can see all of your uh, comments any minute it's going to kick in with any luck well just wait for that to catch up so yes, today we're going to be making ducks, which is uh, rather exciting. Um, I've gone for a kind of Indian runner duck this time, but you could use these kind of shapes to make any duck you like, really. Um, or make a documentary. There we go. Let's go <laughs> in, big, in big with the uh, the dad jokes there. Lovely. <laughs> so I'm just going to let people catch up a minute and uh, we'll see how we go. As I say, I'm shooting without um, without an assistant today. So, um, hello from uh, hello Ian. How are you doing? Good to see you. Hello, adventures in grey and green. Lovely. This B um, Van Kempen. All sorts going on. Excellent. It's hard to read on my little screen there. Um, excellent. So yes, as I say, we're going to be making kind of runner duck. But as I say, you could make a khaki Campbell, a singing duck, a Muscovy, anything you like really, mallard. Um, I was tempted to go with something a bit more exotic, like a mandarin duck, but I figured that was probably a little bit on the uh, tricky side. Hi Anna, Maker's Mark, Andy, how you doing? Walking the Sun 41, hi. Numbers are building up nicely. Excellent. So yes, lots of great response. I managed to post our narwhal video um, this morning. So I've been having some technical issues. I think I need to buy a new hard drive, external hard drive for my Mac as well. Um, the files have suddenly got massive, even though I'm converting them to M uh, MP4s uh, to keep the size down. So um, yes, I'm going through a few technical issues at the moment as to that. And I've really discovered that I'm gonna have to reshoot the panda and the lobster film to get those on and possibly the seal, sorry Lizzie, um, because the camera drops around. I might place it as it is because it's quite funny watching the camera droop and we'll see how we get on with that. <laughs> Shona with a parade of ducks there. So you could have a whole parade of ducks, try lots of different types as well. So you could go for male and female, they're obviously quite different as well. Um, I've got this kind of stony colour here or you could go for white. Um, this is kind of the colour that we use for grommet as well, so, um, so you're in good company. Um, or Dr. Dog, if you're a Rex the Runt fan as well. Lovely, so I think we'll get started. So I'm gonna use a whole strip for this duck. And then we've got half left over then for wings and the head. So I'm gonna make the main body. And again, it's all about getting the clay nice and warm. And I've put a few of my plasticine menagerie out. And um, that appears to be the edge of the iPad I'm shooting with on the side there, or the grip. Um, I didn't see that in shot when it was setting up, but hopefully you can see everything nice and clearly. So I'll try and keep it on this plank of my uh, trestle table. <laughs> Yay, grommet. <laughs> Excellent. So as I say, always get your clay nice and warm. Um, if you need to wipe the table down, give it wipe with some wet wipes or a cloth. That's always a good thing to do. Keep everything as clean as possible. Afternoon, George. <laughs> so getting the clay nice and warm so if you can get it to a smooth ball you know you're in a good starting point so I'm going to make a round base 
to the bottom of my duck. And what do we think the first shape's gonna be? <laughs> sup, George. <laughs> sup, sup. Um, yeah, you guessed it. We're gonna go for a carrot. Only a flipping carrot. And roll it out to so on a nice thin neck. So I'm rolling my carrot upside down at this stage. Showing it, there we go, big carrot fan. <laughs> and I'm gonna make a very long, thin neck because certainly Indian, Indian runners have this very long, crazy, crazy neck. So I'm gonna pinch that out a little bit. And I'm also gonna pinch a little bit of a chest in there as well. So I'm actually gonna get my thumb into the front and create a little bit of a, a chest shape and also pinch in at the sides to give that an all round. So it looks a little bit like a stomach or something like that, some kind of organ. <laughs> George, you can have a fat neck duck if you like. Oh, hello from uh, from Switzerland. How are you doing, Vasti? Very nice to see you again. Excellent. So I'm adding a nice chest in there. And I'm also going to pinch out the back end and give it a little bit of a tail. And add an additional tail feather afterwards. So there we go. We can see our duck is starting to form. Yay, ducks. <laughs> As I say, you can make whatever duck you like, but I'm quite liking this and it's standing as well, which is rather nice. You could make one if you're finding it a little bit tricky, um, make a kind of egg shape and squash it flat onto the table. Um, and then you could put wings and a head on it uh, like that and then bring the head up. Um, that would make it a kind of, you know, a swimming duck. So you don't have to worry about legs and things like that as well. More of a decoy kind of shape. That would be quite nice. As I say, really, this is just the starting point for you to go wild with your own creations. So I'm making a nice little tufty duck bottom. And then I'm gonna also might just add a little bit of a gap between those legs, at which point we'll put a, can, a pencil in there to make some sockets for the legs as well. So quite a nice shape forming here actually. I think I'm gonna offer it up to my other duck just to see how we're doing, just so you can see the combination something like that and so we can worry about getting it nice and smooth later on now i'm going to use a couple of cocktail sticks in this one just to make sure everything's nice and sturdy we've got this thin neck and um didn't know you were going live today i'm going to go i'm going live all week this week so um i decided to it's actually quite a nice way of doing it, it means i don't have to shoot two videos i can shoot them at the same time uh to make sure that you have the footage so it saves me a little bit of hassle um, and it means I can wrestle with my technological issues um, at the same time, which is proving quite uh, annoying at the moment. But I will get on top of it and life will become easier. There we go. Anyway, that's the rough shape. What I'm going to do now is add. This is the optional bit without dropping it. I'm going to add a cocktail stick down the neck or toothpick. If you're um, preferring toothpicks, you could even use the plastic ones, but the wooden ones are best. Um, at the moment, I've got bamboo ones, which aren't the best for this. I normally have um, actually quite cheap ones, um, standard like pound pack you'd find in any supermarket, uh, well, like Tesco or Sainsbury or um, or uh, is it Home Bargains? I think have the best ones. They're super long and really nicely made as well hand sculpted are those bamboo cocktail sticks they are george i'm afraid they are leftovers from a workshop um i'm trying not to buy any more i'm trying to get through these before i go and treat myself to the other ones our new plus should be here this week or so so we can join in turgworks that's brilliant excellent well it'd be lovely to have you aboard um if you don't know turgworks you can have a look at uh what he's doing and does a daily challenge which is rather brilliant um and use my theme of dogs last week um, but doing some absolutely brilliant stuff. So if you like people who make things, um, you could have a look at that. And uh, yeah, that'd be 
really good. Share the love a little bit as well. Um, in looking around on the internet, and lots and lots of different makers doing brilliant things. There's a makery in Bath um, doing splendid things, um, making all sorts of stuff out of fabric. And I've done some animation workshops with them and um, really, really lovely people. Um, and also um, let's make art as well in Bristol, doing some incredible projects with paper bags and cardboard and all sorts of incredible things that I could probably not do myself actually they're really really great so if you need extra projects for your kids or yourselves to do as well you can make some amazing fancy dress costumes from their ideas as well there we go we've got a stick in there with a little bit of stick poking out the top to pin the head on so I'm going to take a small amount of the spare clay so I've got another strip now you'll see mine's in sticks now this is because certain colours are a bit harder than others and it will naturally split and fragment. You can see this piece is coming off, so I might use that as a size guide. And I'm going to tear two of those off and make a head. Have you made all of those models today? Uh, no, these are some of them are test ones. So the orange pangolin that might be just off shot or slightly in the background um, was a test one. Um, there's a grey armadillo that I've been testing out. Um, I was teaching with my good friend Bertie um, the other day as well. So some of these are test ones and other ones I've just done on these hourly workshops as well. You've got ducks uh, as well. Brilliant. Excellent. And what kind of ducks have you got, Joanna? 23. I do love a duck. My granddad used to keep ducks. He had khaki Campbells, which are a, a rather nice duck. And he had some Muscovies as well. And Muscovies are really big ducks with those kind of very fleshy red kind of um, patches around their faces. The armadillo. <laughs> the armadillo was good fun to make actually. I will be working with that and turning it into probably a bonus, a bonus build as well. So I'm making a fair sized head. You could go a little bit bigger if you like, but India runners have got quite small heads really. So starting off with a ball, my neck may be even bit a bit on the flat side, so I'm going to smooth up and try and make that a little bit thinner. And blending the clay up. Can you see? How that's working there. Brilliant, just trying to make sure I'm on both cameras at the same time. Oh, Muscovy and Aylesbury. Oh yeah, I love Aylesbury ducks as well. Really, really beautiful. Um, friends had singing ducks as well and they were absolutely beautiful. I do quite like going to a, a poultry show actually and looking at all the amazing chickens. I've kept chickens in the past. I'd like to do it again but not really um, in the right place for them at the moment and also we do have a very uh, active fox in our garden as well so um, certainly uses it as his toilet quite a lot so um, I don't think the ducks would last very long or chickens sadly so there we go have I ever made a my lad um yes please can you do a bull from Eve I'd like to do a bull actually that'd be great I should add that to the goldfish bowl um I've made a mallard for um pilot episode of a series that didn't get off the ground one of my own um many many years ago and also helped make some ducks for a hovis commercial stop motion commercial that Ardman did several years ago as well there we go so I'm nicely blended in the head and I'm gonna make some wings so this is my favorite one so far as you've got three runner ducks are oh, lovely amazing have you made a penguin Thank you from Molly. Um, I have made penguins in the past. Yeah, I did them for Creature Comforts, actually a whole family of penguins. So I'm going to take off a couple of small pieces. They've got very thin wings. They're not really that useful, maybe for balance. They do tend to have them on the side. My grandpa feeds a muscovy duck called Mr. Grumpy, as he hisses a lot, <laughs> from Idris. That's rather brilliant. So I'm going to use one of these pieces. Um, yeah, they're really rather amazing. Quite... Uh, ooh, I've seen my ducks falling over with the uh, the shock about the uh, the hissing duck. So actually, this is a good opportunity to show you the <laughs> beak shape as well. So this is what my duck looks like um, without a beak, and this is the beak, almost like uh, kind of Daffy Duck. Actually, I've gone for, especially when he removes his beak as well, and it just sits on there. You could pin it if you wish. But as I say, everything's easily off and honourable. So if you want to replace it, make some beak. Beak replacements, then you could certainly do that. Let's make sure you're going to sit now. You stay where you are. I'm going to jostle you a bit too much. It's the joys of um, 
Hi. <laughs> Hi, Ed. How are you doing? <laughs> it's the joys of uh, live model making. So this time I'm making another carrot for a wing. Poison dart frogs, please. Yep, that'd be lovely. Cute little duck dudes. Duck down. Yep. <laughs> you can start making your own entertainment now as well while I'm fixing bits and pieces. So I've started with the carrot and then I'm going to flatten it down like so. Rabbit season, duck season. Love those cartoons. Absolutely amazing. Lovely. So I'll make it a you know, kind of bendy carrot, really, or a chilli shape, if you like, and it's flat that way. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use a cocktail stick, actually, as my sculpting tool for this one, because it's a bit finer. And I'm just going to put the heel of it, the middle of it, into the wing. And then, if you can see what I'm doing there, adding in a few feathery tuff, tufts. And you could do the same, or you could add texture all around. I'm just going to roll that under there so it's got a more 3D look to it. And it's just going to help separate the tufts, the feathers on those wings a little bit as well. There we go. So there's one. And as I say, you could add extra bits and pieces as well, extra bits of feathers and detailing. So I'm going to add that on the side. Could go even thinner. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. So you can smooth that in. I like to keep them fairly separate looking. <laughs> Get out, China. <laughs> Crocodile. door. You sicken me. <laughs> I'll do the jokes. <laughs> there we go. So that's one one wing and we're going to make a second one <laughs> so again carrot it's a lot of carrots at the moment often it's sausages and peas and things like that so grommet is almost made entirely of sausages eggs and peas and maltesers but this seems to be all carrots really maybe a malteser for a head as well could have a little bit of balance in it so Again, just using the body of the cocktail stick and then rolling it over to graduate that line so it gets thinner. And you can have a bit of a play with that. You could always put some feathers along here as well. That would be really nice. As I say, you could spend a bit more time. Can you put wild boar into the bowl? I don't think it'll fit, but I'll give it a try. Um, yeah, I'll absolutely add a wild boar to the list as well. A good friends of mine um, live on the edge of the forest of Dean and often when they walk their lovely dog Sydney they see wild boar but I've sadly never got to see them yet so um, I'm hoping one day to see some wild boar in the wild. There we go nice right hand wing. What type of play do you use and is it the same you can animate with? It certainly is so this is as I say you can see it in the backdrop actually if I move my hands away on it while I put the wing on you can see that it is from new clay products and it is new plast i don't get um any money i'm not being um paid to advertise it's what we use at ardman um and it's what i've pretty much used for most of my well all of my career really and most of my childhood as well um so yes yeah, it's based on the original harvard's recipe so it's as close to the original plasticine as you can get as i say there we go so um yes did I, uh, could you make an orca? Um, Otto, I could certainly make an orca. A good choice. Another tricky one with black and white. Black and white models are quite tricky to clean, keep clean, but if it comes up in the drawer, then absolutely. But I am a slave to the goldfish bowl, so I shall add it in and we'll see whether it gets in the drawer. So we've got nice wings. I'm going to add a little bit of a tuft on the tail. And Add a couple of feathers. You could actually add feathers wherever you like. So I'm just putting a little one on the bottom there and I might even put one on the underside to make a kind of apple pit shape or raindrop shape. I might just put that down a second like so. Hopefully you've all got outside and enjoyed some of the weather as well. Um, 
it is a beautiful day out there again and uh, I've been walking in the fields and seeing all sorts of things so um, with the days getting lighter it's been less and less likely that I get to see the road here but we've got a lot of road here around here and you see the pheasants and the cormorants um, are around by the local fishing lakes as well so that's been rather nice could I make a horseshoe crab absolutely could I shall add that to the bowl as well I'm rather hoping one of those might come up we've not had uh, any well we've had some astropods so we've had lobsters and we've had wood lice but we've not had uh, not had a horseshoe crab yet I think that prehistoric although tomorrow is a very exciting day and it's going to be dinosaurs so we've got dinosaurs tomorrow so that is rather exciting so just to show you put a couple of little feathers on the tail and I'm also going to put could add a pygmy goat absolutely so I'm going to put a couple of little feathers on the back of the head because I think that looks quite cute. So I'm going to layer them up, a couple on there. A parrot would be great. And we have got little uh, ring neck lorikeets around by us in the local woods. Well, they've not seen them this year. I'm imagining they're around still because it's not been that harsh. Um, they kind of fight it out uh, with the hawfinches. Uh, I am based uh, between Bristol and Bath. So, um, so yes. Kind of equidistant really so i get the best of both worlds uh could i make a suffolk punch now that's one of my absolute favorite oh it's tortoises tomorrow you're right it is tortoises tomorrow we've got dinosaurs later in the week i do apologize someone's paying more attention to what i'm doing than i am so that's uh that's good to know <laughs> yes tortoises tomorrow so that's rather exciting um yes and i have made tortoises before for an episode of creature comforts and for a few other things worked on um the ill-fated tortoise and hare film that Arden were making many years ago that never uh, saw the light of day in the end was was stopped part way through um, and that had some amazing obviously tortoises as you would imagine but yes well spotted <laughs> so I might even put a few little tufty feathers down the neck as well because that kind of adds some texture and life I did quite a few ducks um, on creature comforts actually and chickens as well uh, two chickens talking about um, egg judging, about how people have bought eggs from the supermarket before and tried to pass them off. Um, but this is chickens talking about people cheating about laying eggs. So I'm just going to put a couple of little feathers around, some on the chest maybe as well. As I say, you could spend a bit more time doing it. So if you make that raindrop shape or egg shape and then drag the clay up like so, then you could smooth it around. It gives you a nice tufty feather look so slightly ruffled just adds a bit of realism to it i think as well and uh breaks up that shape a little bit which is always nice i think so there we go i'll maybe add a few more later on so i'm thinking we probably need a beak that would be quite good wouldn't it really um pretty essential i would have thought x well you should yeah move, move to bristol it's a great place to live um obviously not at the moment wait till after this is all over um but yeah, no, great place to live. There's lots of art things around, um, good music scene, all sorts of stuff. Really, it's a good place to live. That's why I like living between both Bristol and Bath, because um, I get the best of both both cities, really. So I'm going to take off a small amount, don't need masses, and get the clay nice and warm. And you could start with a carrot if you wanted to. It's not a bad place to start. Most things are starting with the carrot at the moment. So I'm just going to squash the end on the table to make a flat part for it to attach to the head. And then I'm going to pinch up slightly to make a kind of more egg shape on the back. And then you can see we're starting to get the bridge of the beak. And then I'm just going to slightly flatten it, if you can see what I'm doing. Like so. And I'm flattening making a nice beak shape. So that's what we're kind of aiming for at the moment. And then on the back, I'm going to start to tease out the edges like so. And you could always put a loop of clay underneath and around if you wanted to. And that'd be a good way of connecting two bits if you wanted to. I'm going to keep it as one shape 
I'm also going to add a nostril in a minute, but I'm just going to see how that sits. A little bit of cat Ambrose there, so I'll just remove the cat hair. And there we go. A nice beak. Now this one's a little bit different to that one, but it, it changes the character quite a bit, which I really like as well. So you could turn this easily into a goose as well, but I think this has got a really nice Indian runner shape. It's amazing how they balance actually, they don't look like they should balance. And this will be the challenge with having them. That's why I've gone for slightly sturdier legs as well. But there we go, it's looking rather splendid, I think actually. Quite pleased with this one. And I'm going to take a pencil, which I'm just gonna prise out from a bit of clay over here underneath the camera. And I'm going to poke our duck in the eye wiggle it around and open up an eye socket on both sides of the head like so and soften those edges like that there we go just give it a little tease around There we go. So hopefully you can see that. There's some cat hair on mine too. <laughs> it is a hazard of having a white cat, really, or a cream puff cat, or any cat actually it gets hair everywhere. So I'm going to make some eyeballs now. Now, the white is very similar in colour, and often when we're work doing workshops, people will have blended in white with the um, with the grommet colour so you'll end up with white toes but to a trained eye so hopefully you can see that actually there is a difference um so i'm going to take two small balls of white clay i haven't put nostrils on yet you can add nostrils to your ducks hand as well uh, hand nose beak a duck nose <laughs> i'm losing my mind today so two small balls of clay offer them up and see how they look so you could go bigger or smaller i'm going to go about that size, I think, and I'm going to leave them poking out a little bit like that because it just gives them a really nice kind of wide-eyed look. Eyes really bring it to life. That's right, um, Ed. There, it's um, yeah, it's a really um, if you're not feeling it and you're not sure, as soon as you can, try and get some eyes on your duck, and you'll feel hopefully loads better about what you're doing. Um, I'm gonna add a nostril on either side of the beak. In fact, I might use a different tool. You could use a pencil, I'm gonna use my sculpting tool and just add in a little nostril on either side. That really brings it to life as well. And you could always put in along the bottom of the, of the beak, you could cheat in another, the bottom of the bill if you wanted to as well. I'm going to keep this one nice and simple. But as I say, you can really go to town with these. Now, Indian runner ducks don't just come in white as well. You can have them more kind of mallardy colours, so they can come with bits of brown and a grey, a green head as well. You could put some eyebrows on. Yeah, absolutely, eyebrows would make a real difference. In fact, if I show you with a little bit of black, which I've got over here, I'm going to put the pupils on first. And usually I'll do the pupils last. But I'm going to make an exception today. I can give my hands a little bit of a wipe. So there we go. We've got one eye on, one pupil on, and the other pupil on. And that really makes a difference. And I'm also going to put that little... A monobrow could be great, actually. Yeah, you could do a kind of Wallace and Gromit style monobrow. That would be a rather effective thing as well. So I'm just putting those dots in. That also makes him look like he's looking forwards. Now, not all of my creations are boys, but just depends on how you build. You could put eyelashes on, a very cartoon stereotype to add things. You could add little slugs of clay for some eyebrows if you wanted to. So Joanna says blue, that's great. You could add a moustache as well if you want. Do you know what? Yeah, go wild. So you could add eyebrows. Now those are a little on the large side, but 
you could that would actually really work look there we go I might add another one on the other side that little kind of slug shapes or commas you could even make them into kind of bushy eyebrows for an older duck either way I don't think it matters <laughs> it's another duck joke there we go I'll try to work out a way of getting that in there there we go if that hasn't lost me any followers <laughs> so I'm gonna leave those I'm gonna leave those on there I think they're quite nice actually those so we're gonna add some feet so what I'm gonna use now is employ the pencil lipstick I think that's really for kittens to be honest um, I'm going to put the pencil in either of those two sides so it's got a kind of got a leg a thigh a duck thigh there we go and again we're softening those edges and now we're going to move on to some more orange orange duck orange and I'm going to lay that on its side and I won't worry too much I can always repair it if anything happens um, so I'm going to make some feet first and then legs I think so I'd advise going for good cartoony sized feet so try and make them the same size and I'll make the legs in a minute so I can clear the decks of anything else so that's the trick is to try and keep it as the pencil of doom well it could be doom or it could be glory it's rather useful tool to have to be honest so again I'm going to start with a carrot again why not isn't it lipstick on a pig um if you wish in your world it could well be on me in my world it's strictly lipstick and kittens that's uh, that's what it's meant to be so a nice carrot and flatten it down and then i'm gonna get my fingers in the end can you see what i'm doing there i'm pushing in almost making like a kite shape and getting that nice third central toe in and then i'm going to tease out the others and not too flat because you want a little bit of body on there do the characters ever remind you of people you know um on occasion yeah absolutely um the you know the characteristics that you pick up on people um and that's always interesting kind of car animal caricatures of people i've not really looked into it that much but yeah you do pick up on those kind of things there we go carrots again always with the carrots so two carrots for the feet flatten down like so and then again I'll show you getting your fingers like that and pushing them into the front and just pinching out that middle toe trying to keep that nice kind of webbed foot shape or kite shape or you can see it's a bit like a kite or a diamond there we go so nice sturdy shapes and try and make them the same so that's a little bit longer and thinner so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a press out you want a nice wide base for this as well there we go so they're not too far off I will tweak them a little bit later on brilliant symmetry is one of the hardest things really so we're going to take a cocktail stick and we're going to snap it in half now as I say I don't particularly like the bamboo sticks but I had some left over from a project um, so I'm going to use those rather than have to buy new ones and I'm going to take some orange clay and I'm going to roll it on the table and this will probably give me enough for a pair of legs sturdy legs now you could get very sculpture and put the knee in there as well and give them a bit of a an ankle I'm not going to worry too too much about that I may have got a little bit thin there so I'm just going to sturdy that up squidge it in you can always squash and start again that's always there's always a reset with plasticine so that's the good thing I'm going to cut that in half you could tear it in half and then just fix it later on oh that's very kind of you Andy that's oh that's really kind of you thank you um yes so if um if any of you are wanting to see more of the projects um, that we've got and you've missed anything um, I'm putting up the other ones that we've missed with live malfunctions um, over the next week or so but there are lots of videos on there already for you to 
have a go at and longer form ones as well so you can take your time a bit more um, recorded from this as well um, you can have a look on the website as well there's a link there and there's also a buy me a coffee thing if you wish to um, donate a bit of money towards plasticine then you're very welcome to I'm happy doing this for free but if anybody would like to uh, buy me a cup of coffee um, then I would be over the moon and quite a few of you have already actually so thank you all very much to you for doing that it's um it's been really I'm really touched by it and it's um it's really appreciated as well I'm not looking to make a fortune from this I'm just actually happy to share and if you haven't got any money and I understand that because I'm not earning at the moment um then please feel free to play with this as much as possible and um and just enjoy it that's what it's here for really I enjoy it and I'm hoping that you guys are too <laughs> nice hashtag Andy, thank you. So I've made two little legs and they're not quite the same size so I might tear a little bit off this one. And again you can make them very leggy ducks if you wanted to. Got quite nice long legs and their legs are right at the back of the body as well. They're very peculiar proportions but I really rather love that. It's amazing that they can stand up at all really. So I'm going to pop it on with my fingers and then I'm going to use, you could use a a sculpting tool or a cocktail stick to then blend the colours together, the two colours together, the oranges rather, <laughs> two bits of clay together. There we go. And make sure it's nicely knitted together. As I say, you could put a little bit of an ankle in there as well. Spend as much time as you like. You could lose hours to this, really. Oh, you could subscribe. That's a very good point. Thank you. Uh, Figments made as well. Um, what would be a really great favour, and I'd really appreciate it, whether you um, <clears throat> whether you donate or not, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Jim Parkin. Jim is in J I M P A R K Y N, um, and I'd love to up my uh, subscriptions. Um, I've been only been doing this on YouTube for the last month, so um, that'd be very much appreciated. As I say, I'm thinking of broadcasting from YouTube and then onto Instagram. Uh, it means I can share it on several platforms and also it means I, it's recorded and it means I don't have to faff around with technology too much, which is great. As long as the pairing software works, then we should have brilliant content already recorded for me. I'm going to record all my mistakes and everything as well. So there we have a pair of sturdy duck legs. And as I say, you can get them to look more like each other than I have at the moment. There we go. Fabulous. And I'm going to take those bits of cocktail stick now and I'm going to, which way I'm going to put it? I'm going to put the pointy ends down the legs. It'll be, make it easier. So push your sticks in like so. And then if you twist them, and it's hard for you to see that, so I'll try and do it on its side like that. If you twist them like a drill bit, they'll worm their way down and you want to leave a bit of stick poking at the top and that's going to pin into the body of the duck. So again, I'll do it a second time so you can see. So pop the stick on like so. And twist it and spin it and it will worm its way down quite happily. These are quite chunky legs again. So there we go, slightly different lengths of stick. But that doesn't matter because that's going to be hidden inside. Um, Peter Miller, uh, Jane Miller says, do I use armature wire? On these, I don't actually. These are just kind of, you could animate with these, um, but they're purely plasticine. They're quick builds. Um, over the coming weeks, I might well get into doing some wire armature work as well and show you some of that and show you some of the places you can buy um, wire armature kits for not very much money or just how to and where to buy your own wire and make your own. Also show you some ball and socket joints if you like as well. Um, armatures, we can get really nerdy um, as well. So I'm, I'm knowing some animation students are looking for, for top tips and things as well. So um, yes, we could do some of that as well. I might do that as an evening session. So I just stuck the legs on, as you can see. There's little holes where the cocktail sticks have come to the end. And you just want to make sure that your duck is now going to stand. And this is the test live looks quacking brilliant there we go that's what I like excellent and there is my standing duck so I'm gonna put a few more feathers and a few more details on 
I think, along the way. I'm just going to give my hand a wipe just to get the orange off so we don't end up with a kind of peachy coloured apricot coloured duck. But this is the hardest part now to get them to stay. Are you going to balance? There you go. You should balance for a minute. So there we go. Well, I just help myself to a wet wipe. If anybody's got any questions, now is a good time. Um, I'm going to be getting some more guests on. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to manage one this Friday, but certainly next week we're going to have we're going to be recording that interview with um, the brilliant Simon Watt from uh, Level Up Human and the Ugly Animal Preservation Society. Um, I'm hoping very much to get uh, my good friend Gillian Burke from Spring Watch and Winter Watch um, on as well. So we're going to be chatting about. Um, well, I'll keep it a secret for now, but hopefully we'll be getting her on as well, um, which is very exciting. And um, I've got some big plans with other people and doing some chats of an evening, some kind of clay time. We can have a chat with different people, artists and comedians and all sorts of interesting folk, um, which I'm really looking forward to. So taking it um, not rude, but into a more adult uh thing as well so of an evening you sit down with a beer or a glass of wine or a cocktail and um a quarantini as i heard somebody calling them the other day um and have a play with clay it's absolutely fine for adults to do it as well in fact i insist upon it there we go so i'm just adding a few more feathery bits along the way you can add some on the wings You, know, you could even add a bit of mud, kind of work that in as well. I might even do a class later this week if I've got time to show you how to paint with plasticine as well. Um, and my amazing things you can do with that. So um, who knows? I don't want to give you all of it straight away. I want to keep something back for each week, something fresh for each week and trying to produce something interesting and new for you each week as well. What do you get when you put six ducks in a box? A box of crackers. Oh, she's back again. Shown. I thought I told you to get out. <laughs> Is it all quack related? Is this all going to be it? You can certainly watch still, um, even if you are a child. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's absolutely fine. I won't be. Uh, I won't be judging you, um, and it won't be anything too rude. So you'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> Brilliant. So I'm going to add a few more feathers along the way. But if you say if you've got any questions, then uh, then please have a go. And our friend Tina over in Denmark um, loves painting with plasticine as well. Um, she's an amazing lady. We met and first worked together on Chicken Run actually many many years ago, and in the studios in Aztec West, up on the wall where we worked in the press mold department. You can still see our graffiti where we all signed our names. This is a press mold department. Um, it shows how little decoration has actually gone in that building because it's still there. The Sharpie marks are still there on the walls. And uh, Tina is uh, also runs amazing animation workshops and you can follow her as well. So have a look at her, uh, her stuff as well online and does amazing animation workshops. And also um, has done a TED Talk, I think, as well. So that's rather good. I had a duck called Quackers. She died to a mink. So that does happen rather sadly, um, quite a lot. My sister has had ducks and chickens and lost a few to mink. They are rather beautiful, but they are incredibly successful killers as well. Nobody suggested a mink so far. I don't think we actually had, I'm not sure if we've had a weasel or a stoat yet either. So um, there we go. So I'm just gonna add a few more feathers and we're done. As I say, you could make your own ducks. Do send us pictures of your creations as well. You could just use this as a basis, or you could make you know ducks as close to the, as mine as you, as you can. Um, I'm going to also add a few little teased in lines along the edges of the feathers, so you could add a bit of texture that way as well. You don't have to do it on every single one, but it just adds a little bit of extra kind of texture to them as well. There we go. A weasel would be great, wouldn't it? Actually, I'd really like them. And I might even blow my weasel joke. So the difference between 
a stoat and a weasel, people often ask me this because I'm very much into my wildlife, um, is that uh, weasels are weaselly recognisable and stoats are stoatly different. And there you go, that's the main way you can tell the difference. It's gone very quiet. Even in the written world, it's gone incredibly quiet. <laughs> in fact, I think I've lost followers through that. So I might end end our session now before it gets any worse. Um, and um, yes, so there we go. There's my finished duck. And hopefully he's going to balance now. I've got him too warm. Sometimes they're hard to balance when they've got a bit warm. So you can let them cool down. There we go. There's a question of... There we go, a question of balance with everything. There we go. Andy saw a weasel last week. I'm excellent. Amazing. Tumbleweed. Yes, I think that's probably appropriate. Um, so, yes, remember the YouTube channel. So at Jim Park and you see all the videos on there. Um, remember to hashtag. There we go. We're coming with the blackboard in. Um, there's no emoji for a tumbleweed, I'm afraid. So hashtag I play with clay. Hashtag isolation animation. So do bring your stuff to life as well. Hashtag claycation because this is a claycation. Hashtag community clay time. At Jim Parkin is me on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. And do have a look at my rather nice jimparkin.com website. And also see some plasticine painting on amazingscenemachine.co.uk. Uh, remember to put in hashtag ducks. Um and Indian runners if you like um, on your pictures as well and at me and share with me and I'd love to see what you've been up to so um, thank you so much for joining me and tomorrow as um, as was rightly pointed out we will be making tortoises or toy toises or turtles American so um, yeah have a good day play with clay and I'll see you next time thank you so much for joining See if I can sign out properly this time. <laughs>